Well, as promised, I finally am eventually getting around to checking out the voltages on the CRT. I've got a blank raster up right now, as you can see. And what we're going to do is check the voltages on the pins. I'm at the cathode, that's 183 volts with respect to the chassis ground. So I'm going to now move this. I'm not going to do grid 2. This multimeter won't go up that high. But mainly I'm looking for a cutoff. And I'm going to look at the uh, grid 1. I'm sorry, I had on grid 1 was 183 volts. And cathode is 275. Can you see that? So, another way you can look at it is you look at the bias. It should be about 100 volts. So going between the grid 1 and the cathode, I'm at 88 volts of cutoff. Well, like I say, Anywhere, anywhere around 100 is about what you're looking for. And this will largely have to do with the brightness setting. For instance, if I turn the brightness, if I max the brightness out, that cutoff would be probably as small as it's going to be. So we're at 82. I don't think you can see that, but we're at about, clearly I don't have the best setup here, about 82 volts. But what I'll do is I'll see if I can do this without destroying anything. Okay, I've got it hooked up there. I've just got between the cathode and the grid. And now I'm going to adjust to max. Okay, that's max brightness, so you'd have you'd assume you have the, the lowest cutoff. Now I'm going to increase 113 volts, and as you can see it's getting quite dark. So right there usually I've usually have let me put on a program. Okay, so right th at that voltage, I'm at about 93 volts of bias. It's jumping around 108, 106. That's going to have a lot to do with the brightness of the screen. So that's why what I'm doing is I like to put it on a blank raster. Kind of keeps it more constant. A couple other checks we're going to do real fast is go back to this. And I'm going to check the heater, the heater voltages. I'm not really looking for an AC here. I'm looking for a DC potential on this heater. And I'm at about 172 volts. So remember now, we compare the heater voltage. Oh, I'm really sorry for this camera. There we go. 172 volts. Now I'll go back to that cathode again. And I'm at a 106 volt differential. I don't think this light's going to work out at all. Here, you hook it back up to the cathode. Because remember, that's what we're. Those are those two elements are right next to each other. 105 volt difference. Uh, I think it says max 200 volts on a CRT. I don't know why they let it get so close, but whatever. Personally, I like, I've seen older TVs, like I think if you look at a CTC 7 or 9, and that uh, that difference between a cathode and a heater is closer to zero, you know, the bigger that difference, the worse, more likely it is to develop a, uh, a breakdown in the heater insulation. One other thing I want to check out was, um, oh, oh, here's something, here's something I noticed. The heater AC, how about that, okay. This TV, this TV takes a little bit of time to warm up to get a good picture. I just assumed it was because of a weakish CRT. But, I'm going to change this over to AC volts now. And, go both sides of the heater. Can you see that? That's uh, 5.92 volts. Get my light on there. 5.92 volts. 5.97. So, the heater is actually a little bit, heater voltage is actually a little bit low. Um, now, that might be 
because some time ago, in an attempt to control the, uh, oh, look at the, I'm going to show one more thing. In an attempt to keep the uh, flyback from overheating and the fact that we have slightly higher line voltage, I think it's usually about 123 volts, I switched to the uh, high volt tap on this power transformer. Uh, now that's, now not only brings on the B plus, but brings on the heater. Now you say, well, gee, it's only uh, like 0.4 volts low. Yeah, but on a older CRT, you'd be surprised how much that 0.4 volts will make a difference as far as the emissions of the CRT. So I don't know. I may end up put it back on the high voltage tap, and then increase the uh, the screen resistor on the horizontal out to. Uh, control the current flow through that flyback because it tends to run a little bit hot. But while I was talking about that, one other thing I wanted to show was how the regulator tube works. I've got it pointed at the filament of the regulator tube. I'm going to turn the... First of all, I'm going to turn the brightness down. And now I'm going to turn it back up. Wide open. You can see how it gets less... more you know, dark screen bright screen. That's the regulator tube absorbing the excess high voltage, the excess current from the uh, high voltage supply. Obviously the darker the screen, the more it has to shunt off because it is a shunt tube regulator. So anyway, that's just something else you can take a quick look at and kind of see what's going on. Uh, uh, I'm going to do a few more checks just for the heck of it to see one of the things, one of the concerns I had was the brightness range of this pot. Remember, I was turning this before, and I only had a pretty narrow range of operation. That's about a quarter turn from full on to useless. And that may be just the way it is. But what I want to do is make sure that the uh, the negative supply, because the more negative it is, the more cut off it is. The negative supply to this pot, which comes from the um, the blanker tube is not overly negative and that can happen if there's a uh, problem in the circuit where it taps that uh, grid which is where it gets the negative voltage from from the blanker tube to supply this pot so I just want to make sure that you know I can try a new blanker tube see if that makes any difference I could try a new video out tube see if that makes any difference I don't know about that um, and I can also uh, the only other thing I want to do is I want to check out this little this cap right here because that's part of the blanker circuit also that supplies the voltage to the, um, to the grids of the uh, well, it supplies the voltage a lot of different places but trust me that cap is something I'm, I'm suspect of so anyway I got some work to do here but I want to get back to you on those voltages uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to quick read I have my analog here no I don't I'm going to come back, if I still have this thing all hooked up, I'll get an analog reading of that G2. I'm curious what that is. I'm guessing it's going to be right around the 600 volt range, but more later.